The following is a hoop ball presentation. Good evening and good night and good morning. Uh, welcome to another edition of DFS Today presented by Hoop Ball. I am your host for Friday Night's Card, uh, David, and I'm joined by none other than Will. Um, how are you tonight, Will? What's going on, David? I'm doing great and happy to be covering this 10-game slate with you. It's been too long. It's been too long. It's, it feels like seven days going on a year, and, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's tough. It's way too tough, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This should be a fun little 10-gamer. Um, we're going to... We're going to go through a bunch of our favorite plays, and, and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. Let's get to it. All right. Let's jump in to the first game of the night. We have the New Orleans Pelicans traveling to take on the Philadelphia 76ers. It's a 7 p.m. start time. We actually have a total for this one, 228, and the Sixers are favored by eight points. And as far as injuries are concerned... Uh, at this point in the season, the injury lists are going to be long, so I'll try and keep it brief here. On the Pelican side, we have Steven Adams, who is doubtful for this one. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is questionable. Josh Hart is out, and Brandon Ingram is out. On the Philadelphia 76ers side, they're relatively healthy. Outside of Furkan Korkmaz, they are fully healthy in this one. All right, well, given this matchup with playoff implications on the line for the Philadelphia 76ers and the Pelicans pretty much um, on the outside, probably dead in the water at this point in the playoff race. Who do you like on, on the Pelican side? Uh, on the Pelican side for me, with Brandon Ingram out, I think that makes it uh, a lot easier to play Zion Williamson at 9900 Um Sometimes it's tough to play Zion because his price kept steadily in, increasing and increasing. And with Ingram and Ball all playing great, you know, you, you're just like, uh, maybe I should play someone else at a cheaper value. But with Ingram out, the load should go all to him for the most part. So I'm good with playing Zion at 9,900 and Lonzo Ball at 8,100. Um, if Steven Adams doesn't play, Willie Hernan Gomez is a good value at 5,000. He can be hit or miss, though, but he will he will get those minutes. And then you can look at Najee Marshall at 4,100 to fill in for some of Brandon Ingram's production. That's all I'm looking at. Who who are you interested in? I mean, again, we're starting off just the way we end every week, it seems, and we are aligned. We are in sync 100%. Um, I'm looking at Zion. You called it 9900 That price tag becomes so much more palatable, palatable, palatable um, just because of the fact that he's just been going off recently in his last five games. He had one bad one against the Nuggets, but outside of that, in his last four, he's been putting out 55, 60 fantasy points consistently. And without Ingram, the use is going to be through the roof. Um, the Sixers have pretty good defense. However, you know, it's Zion's a special type of athletic talent. So he's going to be very tough to stop. So I love Zion Williamson. It's a great call. I'm not going to put as much cards into Willie Herman and Gomez um, just because he's definitely, as, as you called, definitely hit or miss. Um, if we get the Steven Adams news early, and we know that Hernan Gomez is going to take those starter minutes, fire him up with confidence at only 5K. However, um, if we have another instance where Adams decides to play, Hernan Gomez didn't even sh- was a DNP uh, in the last one, and that really killed my season-long fantasy team. So I'm, I'm a little bit hurt on, on the Hernan Gomez train <laughs> right now. So um, per- personal I'm- vendettas aside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's a great call. And then Najee Marshall is probably one of my favorite value plays on the slate at 4100 Um, the guy just signed a three year, $5.3 million contract. So the Pelicans obviously see something in this, in this undrafted rookie. So I love Marshall. I think he's going to take plenty of minutes. He should get 25 to 30 minutes in this one with Ingram out, especially if the Sixers end up making this game a blowout. Najee Marshall is going to get all the minutes he can handle. So I love that that price. Probably one of my favorite value plays, like I mentioned, on the entire slate. Um, Lonzo Ball, a little price too, a little, too high for me at 8100 at this point. Um, so I'm not going to take too many shots at him. Although 
he's been alternating great games with bad games. And if, if, we, if we continue on that train, he's due for another mediocre game. So I'm not <laughs> going to play Lonzo Ball um, in, in this one. And, and that pretty much rounds it out. Um, I think we can dive into the, the sixer side of the ball. And, and I'm looking at one guy, one guy only. Are you looking at more than one guy? Man, I, and go ahead. I'm going to let you go first because it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, at Joel Embiid right now, 10700 That price tag is extremely high, obviously, one of the highest it's been for Joel Embiid this season. But the Pelicans, especially with, if Adams decides not to play in this one, which is very likely, Embiid should have put up a monster game. Coming off a 54-point effort in a blowout against the Rockets, I see 55, 60 points with ease in this one in a very nice matchup and up pace game too um, with that, that nice high total as well. I love Embiid. Um, normally, I'm a huge Ben Simmons guy. I've been a Ben Simmons guy all season, um, but he has not been performing at 7,400. I'm just not going to take any shots at him. He doesn't look this, like, like the same player that we saw in the All-Star game. So um that's it that's it i think uh d- dive right in see see if you see if you have anyone else who you're looking at nope see on my list i have one name and one name only the same as you joel mb 10,700 so i just wanted to see that uh, we definitely are on the same page and i love your point on ben simmons it's like he's kind of been in cruise control i don't know if he's just waiting for the playoffs or what but it's not really safe to use him right now so that's it. We're we're twins again. <laughs> Love it. Twin twins and wins. I don't even know if that makes any grammatical sense, but let's roll with it. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's uh, let's dive into the next game on the slate. We have a seven thirty p.m. start time. We have the Boston Celtics traveling to take on the Chicago Bulls, who are in a second half of a back to back. There's no total or spread at this point, as far as injuries are concerned. On the Celtics side, we have some big news. Jalen Brown is out for this one with a right ankle sprain. Romeo Langford is probable. Tristan Thompson is probable. Raul Williams the third is questionable. On the bull side, there has not been a injury report submitted at this point. However, we know um, on the Bulls that we're going to have a pretty healthy team, uh, just given the fact that it's the second night of a back-to-back. Uh, something to monitor with some of the veteran minutes. Um and with the playoff picture dwindling for the Chicago Bulls, um, who, who who are we looking at on the Celtics side? I, I'm, I have a few names that I, that I have penciled in, especially with Jalen Brown out in this one. Right. Uh, and when Jalen Brown's out, you automatically think, well, I can play Tatum. But for me, he's priced a little too high for me at 10500 I mean, he's normally in the low 9000s. And his production is still staying around at that low 9,000s, in my opinion. Um, So I don't think it's safe to play him at 10,500. But I do think it's safe to play Kimball Walker at 7,600 with Tatum, uh, with Brown out. Um, He can get you mid-40s any given night. Um, So that makes it safer with Brown out. You can look at Marcus Smart at 6,900. I don't think that's a great play. I think he's still priced a little too high for what he's been doing. Uh, sneaky play is um, probably the rookie uh, Aaron Neesmith at 3,300. Um, with um, Jalen Brown out, he'll just have some more opportunities to do something. But it's it's kind of a shot in the dark because he could get big minutes. He could be limited. Um, but... Though I'm only looking at, I only feel safe with Kimba in this matchup because of price points. How about you? I mean, again, I think we're we're in sync again. Mm-hmm. Like as far as games go, um, I'm totally with you in this one. I think Jason Tatum, everyone's going to flock to, but that price tag is just so high. It's going to be very tough for Tatum to hit value. Although Chicago is a team that gives up just fantasy points by the boatload. So Jason Tatum might be able to go off for 55, 60 fantasy points or 80, like he did the other night when he had six, a career high 60 points. But um, I'm still not going to have too many shares of him despite this juicy matchup and with the added usage. So I love the Kemba Walker call 7,600. I think that's a fantastic play. Um, it's going to be a play that in that mid tier price, I think it might be overlooked a little bit and against the Bulls, He should absolutely eat. And he's been playing really well recently. This is the Kemba that I'm sure the Celtics really wanted to see. And and now that he's coming back from from that injury, 
Um, after missing all those those games with the uh, oblique strain, he looks like he's ready to unleash against Chicago Bulls. So love the Kemba Walker call. And then Aaron Naismith, I put in here as well. I, I, I put a little check mark next to him. You know, 3300 is worth a gamble here and there. He hasn't lived up to uh, what he was, the production he was having a few nights ago, a few games ago even against the Spurs and the Blazers. But Naismith, Naismith, Naismith sorry, um, he is definitely going to be in play for me at 3,300. Should get added playing time with the Jalen Brown news. Considering they play the same position, I expect a little more Naismith in this one. So love that. Um, I, I think I think we're in sync otherwise. Um, jumping over to the bowl side, the coming, second night of a back-to-back, Zach Levine's back in the lineup. Are you playing him? I don't think he will play, honestly. But if he plays, um, it's still a little too high for for me because I think he'll be limited. I, I mean, you really just have to wait to see till tip off because, you know, prior to the COVID uh, thing that, you know, whether he had it or was near it, he wasn't really playing like a 10,000 price guy. Um, so I don't know if you would feel safe playing him on a back to back at uh, 9,800. Uh, uh, and same for Vucevic. Vucevic was uh, questionable tonight. Uh, um tonight on the six um so i don't know if i'll feel confident playing him either uh you can go down to uh, patrick williams at four thousand. he should get minutes especially if people sit um but it's it's no confidence for me on anyone in the bulls really tonight yeah i mean that's a big one i think second and a back-to-back vucevic played heavy he actually didn't play heavy minutes uh, tonight, which was good, but just because of the kind of the scenario against the Charlotte Hornets. But uh, to your point, he may be limited a little bit on the second night, uh, especially since he's a veteran. They might protect his minutes, Zach Levine as well. Um, if Zach Levine sits, then I think we can fire up Patrick Williams. I think this would be a great spot for Mr. Williams, uh, the rookie. Uh, definitely a guy that has potential. I heard a recent comparison uh, I was reading on Twitter today. Uh, someone said he looks like a young, uh, very very high praise, but a young Kawhi Leonard, and I was I was taken aback by mm-hmm. that. So I don't know about if that's a fair comparison. <laughs> um, but at four thousand, worth a shot, especially if the game ends up being a blowout. If the Celtics get off to a big lead, if the Bulls sit a bunch of guys, um, there are worse guys to fire up than Patrick. Uh, I like that. Um, and then I'm looking at Daniel Tice. Uh, slight revenge game narrative for me at fifty three hundred. Yeah. I know that the price tag is pretty high. It's bumped up, I think, for the revenge game narrative. But he's had some pretty nice games recently. He's put up 29 and 30 in two, 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 two of the last three games he's played. Um, but um, I don't know if I'm going to have too many shares of Tice. I think um, Patrick Williams is probably going to be the safer play um, as far as the Bulls go. I'm not looking at anyone else. T- Thomas Sodoransky, Thaddeus Young, Kobe White. Uh, despite playing better, finally, uh, just in time for just in time. As soon as I drop Kobe White, he starts playing well. So, <laughs> um, but he's been playing much better. But I don't trust him. He's not hundred. I don't think he is gonna get enough enough of a, a playing time. And uh, this is not the right matchup for him. So I, I think we we can jump on to the well, next I will game. Say, I will say oh, if, sorry, Vucevic, if, if Vucevic does sit, then that makes Tice almost a must start. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. If yeah. Vucevic is out, fire up Tice with confidence. And and that's that's crazy, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a great call. Um awesome. All right. So let's uh unless we have anything else, we can dive into the next one. And we have a little eight PM start time. We have the Orlando Magic, uh former Vucevic team, taking on the Charlotte Hornets. Uh your Charlotte Hornets, might that's I add. Nice. Uh, (laughs) the game total is 215 uh and a half and the hornets are big favorites eight and a half point favorites wow and they're coming back they're they're playing a second night of a back-to-back um so as far as injuries are concerned um definitely something to monitor um because it is a back-to-back set on the Hornets side, we don't we don't have any injury submissions yet, but we do know Miles Bridges is, is out. Gordon Hayward is also out. Devontae Graham is likely out as well. Um, on the 
Hornet side. On the Magic side, it's a pretty extensive list, so I'll keep it. I'll, I'll try and run through it. Wendell Carter Jr. out. Michael Carter Williams out. James Ennis the third out. Markel Fultz out. Jonathan Isaac out. Chuma Okiki out. And Otto Porter Jr. out. And finally, Terrence Ross out. Whew, that was that was a mouthful. Um, <laughs> the whole team's yeah. out. <laughs> the whole team's out, pretty much. So, with that said, well. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna dive into the magic because I'm looking at one name and one name only uh, on the Orlando. Actually, two names and two names only on the Orlando side, and that's Mo Wagner, which is crazy. Um, wow. That I'm looking at <laughs> Mo Moritz Wagner at 5,500, um, coming off a 30 point effort in a blowout against the Celtics. Um, I think that now that he's finally found a home, potentially, who knows? But with Wendell Carter out. Um, he's going to get plenty of playing time. Um, he's a guy that has proven in his career that he can he can score, he can make some shots, um, he can do a little bit of everything. He just hasn't been able to really find his home. So maybe this is the opportunity that he needs. So I'm looking at Mo, Mo Wagner. And the second guy I'm looking at, a recent pickup on my fantasy team, just side note, RJ Hampton, 5,200. Love RJ Hampton. He's been getting so much opportunity now that he's in Orlando uniform, and he's really shined. Over his last three, he's putting up over 40 fantasy points a game. And at 5,200, that's a fantastic price tag to pay for Mr. Hampton. So I love him. Orlando doesn't have anything really to play for, so I think this is going to be a perfect opportunity for another R.J. Hampton uh, ceiling type of game, uh, especially against your Hornets. So I'm looking at those two guys, Mo Bamba, uh, just went off absolutely nuts in the last game. 6,100, um, you know, you can chase the 53 and the 46-point efforts in the last two. This is the Mo Bamba everyone's been waiting for. Um, I just, it's hard to trust Mo Bamba over three games in his career. So the only reason why I'm not looking at too many shares of Mo Bamba, but I don't fault you if you are going that direction. Who do you like, Will? <laughs> Trust Mo Bamba. <laughs> I'm on the other end of that spectrum. Uh, I think, yeah, at 6,100 with Wendell Carter out of the picture, he's just been going off. And he has that high ceiling potential that I think Mo Wagner does not. Mo Wagner is a safe play, though, with everyone hurt. But I think Mo Wagner will be, get you around 30. But, you know, Bamba can get you up to 50 in the 50s. So, uh, but yeah, of course, I'm sure next game he'll flop because you said he can't do three great games in a row, but we'll see. And I, my other guy I had was RJ Hampton. So you nailed it with that one. Nice. Uh, you looking at anyone else on the Orlando side, uh, any shares of Cole Anthony? So I don't know what's going on with Cole Anthony. I know he got hit in the head and they thought it could have been a concussion, but he came back, but he, he's. Been in a little bit of a slump lately, so as far as fantasy production, so I, I don't think it's safe to play him right now. Absolutely, no, I, I couldn't agree more. All right, so I'm gonna let you take it away on the Charlotte side, and I know you're itching to, to mention a few guys, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let you go here with, with the Hornets. Yeah, very excited. You know, Lamella Ball has been back for three games now. First two games seemed like he was just, you know. Finding his way back, still productive games, but his last game he had 45 drafting points, 23, 7, and 6, just all around great game. And against the Magic, no one is there to stop him, so it's a great value at 8,200. Same for Terry Rozier. Uh, he's, his production has been down a little bit the last two games, but uh, with Miles Bridges out, obviously Gordon Hayward out, um, he should be able to fill that offensive scoring load and have a good game. I think you can look at PJ Washington. At For National Nurses Week, Fortis is honoring the millions of nursing professionals in our community caring for loved ones. More so today, the need for nurses is vital. And Fortis College and Institutes recruits people like you to train to become a nurse. Do you want to be a nurse? Start your essential career in nursing with a Fortis education. Just visit fortis.edu to learn about hybrid instruction and online enrollment. Then talk to Fortis by dialing pound 250 Keyword, nursing school. For the ones standing guard. For the eagle-eyed. For the knights in shining armor. And for all those who support them. We are Granger, your experienced safety partner. Offering supplies and solutions for every industry. Committed to helping keep your facilities safe. And your people safer. Call, click Granger.com slash safety, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. 7,000, 
uh, just like we said, everyone is out. And my other guy I have is Jalen McDaniels at 5,200. Um, his production, you know, he came out of the gates incredible. And then he completely disappeared. <laughs> but his last two games, he's been getting uh, more minutes, 27 and 39 minutes. And he's been able to be productive once again. So I think he's someone you can look at also. So we have four options on the Hornets. Um, but obviously you're going to feel the most confident in LaMelo. How do you feel about the Hornets? Yeah, I mean, second on a back-to-back, LaMelo Ball should be able to bounce back nicely. I know on Thursday he didn't he didn't really have one of his better games um, in, in, against the um, Chicago Bulls, but I think this is a perfect bounce-back opportunity, 8,200, the potential rookie of the year now that he's back playing. I mean, definitely a two-horse race at this point for rookie of the year, and LaMelo, I think, is going to try and, and build his case. So 8,200, great matchup. Um, love that call. And then the other guy I'm looking at, the same guy as you, again, P.J. Washington, 7K, um, a guy that has been playing consistent basketball now uh, at this point in the season. He's really starting to, to play well. Over his last three, he's averaging um, almost 35 fantasy points a game. Um, and tonight, uh, in a losing effort, he he, he made six three-pointers. So he's he's a guy that once it gets hot, I mean, he's someone that definitely has a pretty high ceiling, can get you steals, can get you blocks. So love that call with PJ. Um, I'm looking at those two guys. I'm not as as big of a fan of Terry Rozier in this one. Um, I just think that 8,000 is a little bit too high for Terry Rozier at this point in the season. Um, if he was in the 7,000s, I'd be more comfortable with him. Um, but otherwise, I can't fault any of your picks. I, I, I love all of them. So... Cool. Um, anyone else you want to touch on? Otherwise, we can dive into the next one. Let's go on to Minnesota versus Miami. Let's do it. A little 8 p.m. start time. The Timberwolves are traveling to take on the Miami Heat. Um, there's no spread or total in this one. Um, as far as injuries are concerned, we have some injury news to monitor, so we should really take note of that. Uh, we have Jimmy Butler is questionable in this one. Tyler Hero is questionable. And Victor Oladipo is out in this one. On the Timberwolves side, Malik Beasley's out, Jared Culver's out, and Jaden McDaniels is also out. All right, well, who are you looking at, if anyone, on Timberwolves besides Carl Anthony Towns? Yeah, well, obviously, like you said, it goes without saying Carl Anthony Towns at 10600 Big price point, but you got to use them if you have the money. Uh, and we... We just mentioned LaMelo, the other rookie of the year contender, Anthony Edwards, just been exploding off the charts lately at 7900 His price has gone up $500 since his last game, but that's because he had 66 DraftKings points. He had 42 points, six boards, seven assists, a steal, a block, just incredible production. And this is starting to be pretty much his team, like, if he's, uh, you know, if Cat is 1A, he's 1B now, you know, and that's kind of crazy to think considering it was D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns' team, but Edwards is playing incredible. You And speaking of D'Angelo Russell, you can throw him in your lineup at 7,300, but it's not really a safe play um, just because, like we said, the rookie's been playing so great, but D'Angelo Russell's last two games have been very productive, so you would just have to hope he would keep that up. How you feel about Minnesota? Yeah, I mean, you touched on a few of those. D'Angelo Russell, fifty-three at seventy-three hundred. He's coming off a fifty-point effort, uh, fantasy-wise. So that's some. That's a name that I have written down here. Um, is going to go overlooked for sure on this slate. It's a Big Ten gamer. So if you're looking to be a little bit of a contrarian, that's a great play. Um, we touched on obviously Carl Anthony Towns. That's a very high price tag, but it's a price that's worth p- paying for. Um, I'll probably look at Embiid for $100 more if, if we're playing the numbers game and, and we have that kind of salary to play with. But um, I can't fault anyone to play Carl Anthony Towns. And then Anthony Edwards, you touched on at 7900 coming off a 66-point fantasy effort. 42 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists. The guy, once he gets hot, you know, if, as far as rookies are, con- are concerned, he has he's a green light and the confidence is extremely high for this young Young player, um, a guy that 
was definitely um, had a slow start to his career. Um, people were saying, oh, this could be a bust. He has turned it around completely, and now he's absolutely in the running for that Rookie of the Year spot. So hats off to him. Um, and that's it for me on, on the T-Wolves side. Uh, on the Heat side, it's, it's going to be interesting to see if Jimmy Butler sits, who, do you, who are you looking at? Okay, I wrote down one name, and that's just Bam Adebayo at 9300 And honestly, that's way too much for him. Uh, he's been priced in the 8000 mainly the low 8000s, and his production has been in the mid-40s for DraftKings points. And his production is still there. So I don't know why his price point jumped up to 9300 So honestly, there's no one on Miami that I feel safe playing in this matchup. How, do, how about you? <laughs> you know, I have to say that I agree with you 100%. Um, Bam at a bio, that price tag is way too high. 9300 It's it's pretty outrageous considering he hasn't hit 45 fantasy points um, over his last five. So I don't know why they're pricing him so high, but I think yeah. um, they're just trying to bait us into not playing <laughs> him. And it's working, so yeah. I'm not going to play Bam. <laughs> The only name I'm looking at, if I know this is going to be uh, I'm left field, but if Jimmy Butler sits for whatever reason, I'm looking at Goran Dragic at 5,600. Uh, a guy coming off a 31-point effort um, against the Mavericks. Uh, a guy that should get more usage, more minutes um, if Butler sits. But I'm not confident in him or anyone, really, to, to your point. Um, I think we can just move on and, and just avoid the heat in, in our lineups for the most part. I mean, I, I circled Trevor Ruiz at 4,600 if Butler sits, but um, I'm not confident playing someone from the class 2005. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm going to be realistic here. It's it's pretty much a crapshoot when it comes to the Miami Heat. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. And before we do, I wanted to do a quick shout out. Um, to my bookie ever since i started this podcast people have been asking me for betting tips i always get asked who do you got lakers or clippers Rodgers or mahomes and i'll tell you what i tell them where you bet is just important is who you're betting on that's why i tell people to bet with my bookie my bookie's rep is rock solid and they got the best odds contests and promotions in the business they're the only place i trust to handle nba nba related bets the one sports book guaranteed to give me the best lines for the upcoming nba playoffs you know me, and you know that I don't give out my stamp approval easily. But to earn it, you've got to be the best at what you do. And my book is the best sports book out there, period. It's simple. Sign up, enter promo code HOOPBALL, and get your deposit match halfway up to 1000 bucks. Head over to my bookie if you want to add a little excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Bet with the best. Bet with my bookie. All right, well, let's dive into the next game on the slate. And we have... Uh, potential absolute blowout, and that's 8 p.m. start time. Uh, Houston Rockets travel to take on the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, there's no spread or total in this one, and as far as injuries are concerned, um, this might take some time, but I'll go through it. On the Rockets, whew, okay, I, I'm going to have to save up some, some breath for this one. We have... DJ Augustine questionable. Avery Bradley out. Sterling Brown out. Dante Exum out. Eric Gordon out. David Nawaba out. Kevin Porter Jr. is now out. John Wall out. DJ Wilson out. Daniel House Jr. is doubtful. Kelly Olenek is questionable. Jay Sean Tate is questionable. And Christian Wood is questionable. All right, Will. Who are we looking at, if anybody, on the Houston Rockets? And tell me if you're playing Armani Brooks. Well, you know, like Orlando, the whole team is out. So, <laughs> but I think there's still some great production and value to be found. I think um, KJ Martin is probably my one of my favorite plays of the night at 4,700. His last game, he had 50 DraftKings points, 23, 10 boards, six assists, two blocks. You know, when he has the minutes and, you know, Kevin Porter Jr. is not there, he can explode and go off at any time. Uh, also, um, Jeffries. Uh, went off. Uh, he's at 3,300. Uh, Daquan Jeffries, uh, just mainly with the minutes wise, he got 41 minutes. And uh, he's, he was with the Sacramento Kings early in the season and he showed some potential. Um, so he only had 20 DraftKings points, but that those, if you're playing 41 minutes and he went two for 10 from the field, that's probably not going to happen again. So that's his floor. So I mean, he can easily get you 30 DraftKings points at 3,300. 
and uh and Anthony Lamb is my other guy at thirty four hundred. Um, he had an incredible game also. Once with like we said, with everyone out, other people were able to step up. He had thirty four DraftKings points, twenty two actual points in the game, and that's great production for someone that's at thirty four hundred. And he had thirty six minutes. That should remain the same. Like we said, with everyone out, uh, I'm not confident in Armani Brooks. Um, how do you feel about him? I mean, I'm on the Armani Books bandwagon only because uh, someone needs to be the ball handler on this team. Um, and I think this would be a great opportunity for him to get some minutes. I mean, he did come off a 28-point effort. At 3,900, if he gets 25, 30 fantasy points, he's also in play. I mean, you can you can realistically play three or four guys on the Rockets with all these guys out that are priced under 5000 and you touched yeah. on pretty much all of them, and they're all in play for me. Um, moving down the line, I 100% agree. Anthony Lamb is a great play. Uh, K.J. Martin, the most expensive of the bunch at 4700 but well worth the price. I think he should have a, a monster opportunity coming off a 50-point game, which I don't expect at all, but I still expect him to, to play well. I think, you know, Kenyon Martin's son is definitely going to be in play for me. Um, and then we touched on Daquan Jeffries. He's in play as well. Um, and then, obviously, I mentioned Armani Brooks. So, with that... I just I just want Armani Brooks to get more assists. Last game, he had one assist, you know, in 31 minutes, and he's supposed to be the point guard. So, if he gets those assists up, then he's definitely a great play. So, hopefully, he can do that. A hundred percent. I think the assists are going to be the key. So you're absolutely right. Uh, that's that's a great call. Out. Well, this this is why we're we're doing this tonight. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, all right. So moving on to the Buck side of the ball, potential blowout here. Um, Giannis will probably likely play in this one. Will you be playing Giannis in this game? For me, I think Giannis is the only guy I feel confident in playing, and he's at eleven thousand. So that's really expensive for a potential blowout. But, uh, you know, he can play 25 minutes and still put up a great game for you, you know. Um, but, yeah, I don't believe, uh, you know, Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday can put up a great game in a blowout, though. You know, they could easily be rested and, you know, their production be a lot lower. So, if I mean, you don't have to force Giannis because it's a 10-game slate. Um, but you never can go too wrong putting Giannis in your lineup. You have any considerations for Milwaukee? Um, I'm looking at Giannis and Giannis only, so I'm right. with you. <laughs> 11K is a high price tag, but I mean, someone has to blow out the Rockets, and Giannis right. can put up. Giannis can put up a triple double in, in 30 minutes potentially, and and that that'll pretty much do it for you as far as price tag. So I'm looking at Giannis and Giannis only. I I circled Bryn Forbes at 3400 in a potential blowout. Um, yeah, that's a good has, call. Yeah, I mean, he has, we've seen it, right? We've seen it um, when he's got an opportunity. Um, he's been able to put up points. He had a 13-rebound game a few weeks ago, which is hilarious to me. Mm. Um, a, a guy at his size getting 13 rebounds. But nonetheless, definitely uh, more of a tournament play. If you expect a blowout, um, then definitely going to be somewhere I'm looking. But otherwise, Giannis is the only safe play. Yep, yep. All right, so let's dive into the 8.30 game. We have the Cleveland Cavaliers traveling, take on the Dallas Mavericks. There's no spread or total in this one. As far as injuries are concerned, um, we're looking out on the Cleveland side. Matthew Dovadova is out. Darius Garland is now out in this one. Larry Nance Jr. is out. Torian Prince is out. Lamar Stevens is out. Dylan Windler is out. And on the Mavericks side, since they're playing the second night of a back-to-back, there's no there's no current um, injuries or um, protocols to report. We know Porzingis is, is out for this one. That's the only one we know about at this point. And Maxi Kleber is also out in, for that game. So, all right, well, let's dive in the Cleveland side of the ball. With Garland out, are you looking at Colin Sexton? Yeah, he's pretty much the only guy I really can consider for Cleveland. Um, you know, he, he'll shoulder the offensive scoring load. Uh, Because Jared Allen has just been, you know, I don't know what's going on with Jared Allen. He was a beast early in the year, but his production has dropped off tremendously. But I think Sexton can easily get you 50 50 DraftKings points. Uh, No one on Dallas should really be able to stop him. 
I mean, they don't have anyone, you know, that scary on uh, their defensive side. Uh, if you want to look at someone else, I think you can look at Isaac Okoro. Uh, his last game was a complete dud, but it was in a blowout. They lost by 36 points. So th- hopefully that contributed to it. Uh, but the game before that, he had 48 DraftKings points, and he had 32 real points in the game. So uh, it's kind of volatile with him, though. So it would be a more of a contrarian play. But he's someone to keep an eye out on. How you feel about the Cavaliers? I mean, you pretty much touched on it. Um, I wish, I really wish I played Isaac Okoro uh, when he did go off a career high because I, I did tout Isaac Okoro recently, and I was like, he's going to get an opportunity. I believe it was on this pod last week when I said Isaac Okoro is going to break out at some point. Um, I just missed it by a few days, so a hundred percent. So I'm going to play him here, forty four hundred. I, I like that price tag. And then oh, the other guy I'm looking at, we touched on it, Colin Sexton. Uh, with Garland out, he should get plenty of usage. A guy that um, we've seen uh, the production. We've seen a guy that can put up 45, 50 fantasy points when given the opportunity. In fact, two nights ago against the Suns, he did just that, where he put up 47 fantasy points against a tough defensive team. So I love Sexton. Um, I think he's going to be overlooked a lot um, on this 10-gamer. So low low ownership and great um, ceiling in this one. So I liked him there, and that's pretty much it. Um, moving on to the Dallas side, who is your favorite play on Dallas, and are you playing Luka? Uh, yeah, I think you can play uh, Luka at 10,900. Um, but, you know, what, is there a spread for this game? I don't think they have one. There is no spread in total. Yeah, so, I mean, this could potentially be a blowout also, so that's something to consider. Uh, but uh, I feel confident in playing Tim Hardaway Jr. at 5,700. His production has been ramping up. Uh, you know, early in the season, he was just, like, not there, just non-existent. But his last three games, very usable at 49, 28, and 52 DraftKing points. And one of those games, he had 42 points in the in the game. That's insane. Uh, so clearly he's taken over the production for um, Josh. What's his name? Josh Powell. Oh, I'm thinking about the old Mavericks. <laughs> Josh Richardson. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I think he's a pretty safe play, especially in this matchup against the Cavs. And then I think you can look at Dwight Powell at 3,700. He's been getting starter center minutes right now, especially with Porzingis out. Uh, I think it's safe. He got 30 and 34, dra- uh, 34 drafting points the last two games. And he played um, on Thursday night. He had a good game, too. When I last checked, he had 10 points and 8 boards. So uh, I think he's a pretty good play at 3,700. How do you feel about the Mavericks? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Tim Hardaway. You touched on 5,700. I think that's a, that's a great call out. Um, I think he is going to be a guy that's definitely going to be in play. Um, he's coming off some, some nice games. Um, we're seeing some confidence out of Tim um, we haven't seen all season for the most part on the Mavericks, and they, and they desperately need it too as they're battling in the playoff race. So um, I love that call for the 700. I am not actually going to play Luka Doncic in this one, um, 1,900. I just think it's just too high a price tag. I know he's got a huge ceiling um, and a guy that can put up triple-double very easily um, coming off some big games. He had an 80-point effort against the Wizards a couple of nights ago. I just – I. For some reason, I just don't see it in this one. Um, I'd rather pay up at the big man position uh, at that that salary uh, versus Luca in this one. And I'll probably bite. I'll probably eat my words later, but I'm not going to be looking at Luca. Um, mm-hmm. Dwight Powell, great call, 3,700. Probably one of my my second favorite value play uh, potentially on the slate. Uh, it's crazy to even say Dwight Powell is suddenly a guy that can actually take down some DFS contests at this point in the season, but he's getting an opportunity with Porzingis out, and he has been shining, a uh, guy that can get blocks and steals. It makes you wonder why he wasn't doing anything earlier in the season. Um, yeah. You know, it really it makes you wonder. But despite all that, I, I love Dwight Powell, 3,700, like I said, one of my favorite plays on the value slate. All right, well, let's dive into the 9 p.m. games. And we have one, and that's the Denver <laughs> Nuggets <laughs> traveling to take on the Utah Jazz battle of two playoff contenders. No spreader total in this one, which is no surprise. 
On the Nuggets, we know Will Barton is out, P.J. Dozier is out, Monte Morris is out, Jamal Murray is out, and Zeke Nanji is questionable. On the Jazz, Yudoka Azebuke is probable, Mike Conley is out, Donovan Mitchell is out, and Juwan Morgan is also out. All right. Who are we looking at on the Nuggets? And are you playing my guy, Facundo Campazzo, at 5,000? Well, yep, you you hit on it. Um, You have the obvious, the MVP, potentially, in my opinion. Uh, Jokic at 10,800. And then, like we mentioned with Luka earlier, you know, Luka's kind of, you know, hit or miss with hitting his value, but Jokic pretty much hits it every night. So if you want to spend uh, $100 less, you know, you can have a safer play with Jokic at 10,800. And Borkando Campazzo at 5,100 is a safe play, uh, in my opinion. Uh, his last two games, 47 and 34 DraftKings points. So he's clearly ramping up the production. Uh, finding his way uh, on the team. You know, early in the season, he was just getting spot minutes here and there. Didn't know his role. It seemed like he knows his role now. Dozier's out. Everyone's out for the most part. So uh, he's running the team pretty well. And those are the only two I feel confident in. Um, I wish I could play Aaron Gordon, but he's just dropped off the face of the earth right now. So how do you feel? I mean, I'm with you. I, I don't know what happened to Aaron Gordon. But someone has to wake him up and say, hey, you're playing on a playoff contender. It's right. time to actually step up because what has happened to this man? I mean, he was a, a great pickup uh, when the trade happened. Everyone was saying Aaron Gordon was going to be the missing piece for the Nuggets. And I'll tell you, he's been missing himself uh, in, in this lineup. So uh, definitely not playing Aaron Gordon. Um, I'm with you on that one. Uh, Fakuna Campazzo, I, I play him. I play him almost every night. Uh, I just wish that he wasn't 5,000. I wish he was a little bit less, but I'm still going to play him. A guy that can get steals, can get a little bit of assist. He's a veteran that has been playing. You can tell he's been playing consistent, important minutes in Europe because he is ready for the big stage. He is ready to be on a playoff contender right away. Um, this was a great signing by the Denver Nuggets out of Europe. So shout out their international scouting department on finding him. Um, so I love this play at 5,000. Uh, and then I'm looking at, to your point, Nikola Jokic, 10,800, as safe as can be. Um, I'm going to play him every time. So I'm definitely on the Nikola Jokic train in this one. Um, I'll, he's probably my favorite big man spend up on the slate Uh probably buy a little bit, buy a nose over Embiid. So I like him uh, quite a bit. And then I'm not looking at anyone else. Michael Porter Jr. is outrageously priced now, 8600 I mean, I think that people at DraftKings are just pretty much trying to, to bait us into not playing him, and it's working because I, I refuse to play him at that price tag. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, anyone else will? Otherwise, we can you can dive into the Utah Jazz who are missing a bunch of key players. Right, and, you know, it's crazy. I only have one person for the Utah Jazz, and that is Bohan Bogdanovich at 6,800. Yes, uh, his sir. His has been pretty safe for my, you know, liking, and his price point is not too high. Um, but everyone else, they're either priced too high or their production is not consistent enough for me right now with everyone hurt. Um, so that's all I got. Do <laughs> you have anyone else on Utah you're looking at? Not even close. Uh, but I, I only circled his name. Um, he's a guy that has been stepping up. He needs to carry more offensive load, especially in this important game against the Nuggets. I think he's going to get plenty of shots. I'm not looking at Jordan Clarkson. I'm not looking at Joe Angles. I'm not looking at Rudy Gobert at 9K. None of these guys are, are in play for me. It's Boyan or Go Home um, for as far as who I'm looking at. So I'm with you. We are in sync yet again. All right, so let's dive in to our 10 p.m. slate. We actually do have a slate in this one. We have three 10 p.m. games, kicking off with the Los Angeles Lakers traveling to take on the Portland Trail Blazers. There is no spreader total in this one, which is no surprise, as we know. Um, As far as injuries are concerned, the Trail Blazers, Zach Collins is out. Norman Powell is probable. And on the Lakers side, um, we we know uh, going into this one that LeBron James is out. Dennis Schroeder is out, and Talon Horton-Tucker is also out for the Lakers. And I guess Jared Dudley, who is inconsequential when it comes to daily fantasy. Um, That's it, uh, as far as injuries go. Um, On the Lakers, with so many guys out, including LeBron, 
Um, are you going to pretty much lock and load Anthony Davis in this one? Uh, I think, you, yeah, he's one of the few guys I have uh, listed as Anthony Davis, but his production in his last two games have not been hitting value. But obviously he always has that potential to hit value. And uh, against Portland, this should be a tight game all the way through. So I think he's a pretty safe play. He should at least get you 50 draft king points. Uh, there's no really one else that I want to play on the Lakers because, you know, as Shaq would call them, the rest are kind of like the others right now. Uh, but uh, I think you can look at Alex Caruso at 4,000 uh, just as a safe play. You know, he's not going to get you 30 or more, more than likely, but he'll go, he'll get you a consistent 25 probably DraftKings points. So if you want to play it safe, you can roll with him, uh, but by no means do you have to. So are you liking anyone else on the Lakers? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. To your point, Anthony Davis um, is – Basically, someone that's pretty much goading you with his price tag at 9800 to play him. But to your point, his, his, his actual production has not been there uh, over his last couple. So I'm not going to be playing him, most likely. I'm looking at Alex Caruso, which is just insane to me, again, to, to look at Alex Caruso at 4K. Mm-hmm. But there's so much opportunity for him. Um, he's getting minutes. He's getting minutes in the high 20s. It could potentially push 30 minutes if this game stays close. Um, he doesn't get you a lot of assists or rebounds, but he does a little bit of everything. Uh, the people's favorite in Los Angeles, Alex Caruso. I will be taking some shots at him. Uh, I'm looking at Contavious Caldwell Pope as well at 3,800. Uh, a guy that should get plenty of shots, um, has the opportunity. He's getting minutes. We've seen it, getting over 30 minutes over his last couple. If he makes some shots, if he makes some shots, he's going to be fantastic. So I love. Contavious Caldwell Pope, uh, 3,800. Love, uh, love, love is a strong word. Sorry, sorry. L- <laughs> let me let me rephrase. I like Contavious Caldwell Pope. There you go. Uh, at 3,800. Um, sorry, I I, I uh, definitely switched out those words accidentally. Um, but yeah, um, I think any of these guys you can play, but I'm not going to be too excited for any of them. As far as the Trailblazers go, um, are you going to be confident in playing Damian Lillard? Yeah, Dame's still under 10,000. So, you know, he was kind of in a slump there for a while, but his last three games have, last four games have been over 50 DraftKings points. So I think he's lock and loaded. One of the better plays of the night as far as someone in the expensive category. Uh, I don't think you can look at Nurkic at 7,000. You know, he's kind of been up and down, but, you know, Four, three of his last four games have been, you know, around that 40-point range as far as DraftKings points, and that's what you want for a 7,000 as a center. Um, so you know he has that potential. He'll have a tough matchup against AD, but they will need him out there a lot more than Cantor because Cantor can't be trusted to guard AD. So I think he'll be productive. And the only other person I'm looking at is Melo at 3,700, uh, if, especially if Norman Powell sits out. Um Norman Powell is probable right now, but the way this season is going, you just never know. Um, but if Powell plays, I probably would fade away from Melo. But that's just something to be on the lookout before tip-off. How you feel about Portland? Man, I, we're on the same wavelength yet again. So mm-hmm. um, I don't even know if I have much to add here. I mean, Nurkic is a great play, 7K. You touched on it. Um, should get plenty of minutes. We'll need his defense. Um Hasn't been able to get a ceiling game recently, but I still think that there's definitely some juice left to squeeze here. So I like Nurkic at 7K. Lillard, 9,700 in play, although selfishly I hope he doesn't do that well um, because I'm playing him in the finals of the of, of our fantasy league. So um, I would love Lillard not to play well, but he should play well in this one against the Lakers. Um, and there's no reason not to play Lillard under 10K. So I'm, I probably won't play him, but I'm definitely recommending everyone to play Damian Lillard. Um, <laughs> I think he's going to go off, but I just I just can't do it um, to my squad. So as far as the value plays, I actually penciled in Carmelo Anthony too. So there's not much else to, to right. really touch base on there. A, a price tag is definitely worth p- jumping into. Coming off a 31-point effort in a blowout, 31 fantasy point effort, apologies. I like Carmelo. Uh, I think he should give plenty of opportunity, especially if Powell, to your point, is out. Um, he's going to be a great play. 
All right, let's dive in to the second to last game of the night. We have the San Antonio Spurs traveling to take on the Sacramento Kings at 10 p.m. start time. No spread or total, which is no surprise. Now their team is coming off of a back-to-back on the Kings. We do have some interesting news to report. De'Aaron Fox upgraded the questionable in this game. Um, so something to monitor as we go. Oh, that's Hall- yeah, that's huge. Tyrese Halliburton is out, confirmed for this one. Um, and Harrison Barnes is questionable. On the Spurs side of the ball, we have some injury news. And that's Derek White, as we know, is out for, for this game. And Trey Lyles is also out as well. All right, well, with this potential bombshell De'Aaron Fox coming back into the to the fold of news, are you going to have any interest in playing De'Aaron Fox at 10,200? No. <laughs> that's that's way too high for me, uh, especially your first game back from COVID protocols, and he potentially had COVID. Um, and that, that you know, kind of like Zach Levine, you kind of like, uh, minutes limit, maybe, maybe back-to-back. We don't know. So you just don't know how they're going to use him. Till you see him out there, and uh, you know, uh, let me see. Are they even in the playoff race still? There, another. Let me see. I got it right here. They're twelfth place right now, um, but only two games behind tenth place. So that's that's. I, no, it's too high for me. So no. <laughs> but for you know, for the rest of the guys, um, I would look at you know, Buddy Hield has been playing very well at eight thousand. And that kills DeLon Wright's value at 6,800 if he plays, though. I, I mean, that makes DeLon Wright not even usable. Um, and the other guy I was looking at is Marvin Bagley. He's came back from his injury and is playing, you know, better than he has all season. Um, so I like Bagley's value at 5,900. It's probably the best. Um, but, yeah, I, I did not have Fox playing in this game. So I had Hill, DeLon Wright both down. That takes a knock to both of them if he plays a full complement of minutes. So, how do you feel about the Kings with that news? I am totally with you again. Um, we are definitely in sync there. Um, this news is going to be huge, uh, mm-hmm. potentially. So if Fox plays, then to your point, we have to take out Delon Wright. Um, Delon Wright, I'm, not, I'm just not going to play him. That price tag has creeped up, but for good reason. He's been balling out on the Sacramento Kings, um, getting those those big minutes. Uh, especially, so if Fox sits, then we can go back to the well with Delon, Delon Wright. Uh, under 7K, should be a great play, can get you steals, can get you assists, can do a little bit of everything uh, on this team. And then the other guy I actually penciled in here is Marvin Bagley III. It, it's it's just, such a silly daily fantasy season when we're circling Marvin Bagley III as a great play, uh, but he's been <laughs> playing well since his return for the most part. Um and under 6K, that's a great price tag. Coming off a 47-point fantasy effort, 30 and 12. This is a guy that everyone was expecting to, to do this kind of stuff when he came into this league. So um, it's nice to see it. Uh, it's just very hard to trust um, night in and night out. So I will be playing Marvin Bagley most likely uh, at that price tag, but I'm not too confident. We have to make, monitor the Fox News. Hopefully we get it before lock so we can reshuffle some of our lineups um, accordingly. But... If we don't, then we might have to to, to throw uh, some darts against the, the board and, and hope that the line right does get those heavy minutes um, and Fox it. So that's it for me on, on the Kings. Um, on the Spurs, we have some guys coming back from injury. Um, Spurs are relatively healthy outside of Derek White. Um, are you going to be interested in playing DeMar DeRozan or Deontay Murray in this one? Uh, yeah, I wasn't really interested in playing DeRozan because the last game they played was a blowout, and that led to him not playing that many minutes and you know not being that productive. And they could easily blow out the Kings, but with if De'Aaron Fox plays, it'll be a more competitive game. So that would help uh, DeRozan stay in and be more usable. He's not um, he's not a must play at all, but um, it's it's a safe, uh, pretty safe value. I like Dejounte Murray. Uh, especially with Derek White out, I think he has potential to be, you know, great, put up great stats uh, and hit value. And the only guy, other guy I'm looking at is Devin Vassell at 3,400. Um, the rookie has been coming along pretty well, and that's a extremely low price for someone that's putting up, you know, those type of minutes. And, and they, they seem to like him. He's playing better than Lonnie Walker. And you just 
hope they go ahead and take Lonnie Walker and, and you know, have him absorb all his minutes. But, you know, in time. So just keep an eye out on the rookie Devin Vassell. He played 31 minutes last game. If he gets anywhere near that again this game, I think he's a must play. Oh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, another value play, there's so many value plays on this slate. So it's, we're going to have to construct a lineup with stars and scrubs for sure, it seems. Um, and Devin Vassell, Devin Vassell is, is a great play. Um, a guy that really came on in the summer league, a guy that definitely is going to get opportunity at some point from Coach Pop to really shine. So I like that call a lot. Um, I'm also looking at uh, probably looking at John DeMurray over DeMar DeRozan. Just the price tag itself is yeah. a lot more reasonable. Um, definitely something to uh, to consider. Um, coming off absolute dud of a game. Uh, against the Utah Jazz, but this is a perfect uh, bounce back opportunity against the Kings. Um, at 7,800, he is going to be a guy that might be overlooked, uh, but but I like him anyway. I think he's a great play, and that's it. Um, that's it for for the Spurs for me. Um, there's not a ton we can go into um, when we're talking about them. Uh, we also realize I just and I, I just realized that we, we went with the home team first, and that was by mistake. So apologies there. <laughs> no, right. it was t- totally on purpose. Yep, totally on purpose. <laughs> totally on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> uh, final game of the card. We have the 10 p.m. start time. It's the New York Knicks traveling to take on the Phoenix Suns. 217 game total. Suns are favored by six points. Only six points because the Knickerbockers are playing great basketball recently. So as a New Yorker, I'm excited about it. Anyway... Um, as far as injuries are concerned, um, we're looking at a few injuries to note um, on the New York's on the New York Knicks side of the ball. Um, we have Mitchell Robinson who is out in this one. Alec Burks is questionable. Emmanuel Quigley is questionable. Closer to doubtful. And on the Sun side, we have a few injuries as well. Jay Crowder is questionable, and Abdul Nader is out. All right, well, final game of the night, New York Knicks. Do you have confidence in Mr. Julius Randle, 10,100? Unfortunately, I don't. This is one of the few times where I'm like, I think I have to fade him. Uh, You know, his last game, 31 DraftKings points, and the game before that, 48. That's not really 10,000 range for me. I want a little more than that. Um, You know, so... I mean, obviously, you can throw him in there. He could he could hit value. He can get 60 DraftKings points at any given night because he's been incredible this year. But it's a little too rich for my blood. The only person I'm looking at on the Knicks is Nerlens Noel at 5,100. And, uh, and, uh, and he's not a tremendous play. But, you know, last game he had 30 minutes. He came back from an ankle injury. And uh, he's pretty much the only big man they have, um, you know, for, as, other than Randall, you know, who's a power forward slash point guard. Um, I think he can get you anywhere from 25 to 35 DraftKings points. And so he's a safe play, not an incredible play, but he's the only one I'm really liking on the Knicks. How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Um, <laughs> New Orleans Dewell is the only guy I circled. I know we talked about last week about not playing New Orleans Dewell just because he doesn't do a lot as far as points, rebounds, assists. But the guy is averaging um, over two blocks a game. Um, and can get you steals night in, night out. Um, in fact, I think he's one of the only guys, if not the only guy in the league right now, averaging two steals and two blocks. I read a stat like that the other day. So oh. something to <laughs> something to throw in there. So um, love the runs of well, 5100. I think he's a great play. I think this is a great opportunity, a great matchup. Julius Randle, I will be playing at 10,100 just because I think Julius Randle is ready to make his mark. And against the Suns, this would be a great opportunity. In the last game against the Suns, he was not able to step up. Shot 6 of 17 from the floor. I expect a huge bounce back in this one against the Suns. So I'm definitely going to be interested in playing Randall. Um, despite some recent production slips, I'm actually looking at looking at him just as far as a tournament play. I think he could be a, a nice little reward for people that, that pull the trigger on him. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I'm not going to be looking at R.J. Barrett. I'm not going to be looking at um, any of the, the point guards in this one either for the Knicks. So, oh, hey, I got a great question for you. Are you ready? Okay, 
I'm ready. <laughs> uh, Julius Randle at 10,100 or Anthony Davis at 9,800. Wow. That's <laughs> tough. Um, based on what I just said, I'll probably go Julius Randle and I'll bite the bullet $300 more. But I, 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 to be honest, neither of them are going to be my uh, probably star plays just because of their price tags. They're priced a little too low for me, actually. Okay. Okay, because I'm, I'm I'm sure a lot of people are going to be debating that you know that similar position. Like, hmm, should I pick one of those two? But you know, it's a tough call. It's a t- I don't I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, I I might go with AD, but it's a tough call. It's very tough. It's very tough, and I'm sure that anyone that has that kind of salary to play around with, um, I'll probably. I would probably have to advise uh, on trying to find some some savings and, and going elsewhere. But yeah, uh, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, so that's probably the move anyway. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one back at you. So be, be ready. I'm gonna throw it <laughs> right after this. So on the Phoenix Suns side, are you looking at uh, a couple guys, or are you looking at just one guy on the Suns? I have a couple guys written down. Devin Booker at 8,400. Every time I play him, he bites me in the butt. But <laughs> you know. He's been averaging in the 40s pretty consistently lately. If you think that's safe enough for you to play at 8,400, put him in your lineup. Chris Paul, obviously, you know, um, last game was a dud, but the game, but it was a blowout. So hopefully that was the reason why. But the game before against Cleveland, he had 69 DraftKings points. So obviously anyone that can hit that potential, and he's having an MVP caliber season, you can put him in there at 7,600. Um, and uh, Mikael Bridges, you know, you know, I mean, you know, that's all I have to say. <laughs> you can consider him, but, you know, <laughs> you want more. <laughs> who, who you like on Phoenix? Um, I like Chris Paul. That's a great call, 7,600. I, I think that's a great play. Um, I think people are going to be against Chris Paul after that blowout in the last one, but this game's going to stay close. Um, I think it'll be a nice little game for him to get 40, 50 fantasy points, so... I like that price tag. I'm not going to play Devin Booker. I'm sorry, Will. I know you're a big Devin Booker fan. No, no, but no. no it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I just can't do it. 8,400. Um, it's a little bit too high. Uh, great matchup, but I, I just I don't know if, if he's going to be able to, to hit it at that price tag. I much prefer going to, to a Lamelo Ball potentially similar oh, yeah. pl- price than in, in that in that range. Um, and I actually circled McCall Bridges as well for 8,600. Um, on my card as well. So we are in alignment there. Couldn't agree more. I think he's going to, a guy that, that can do a little bit of everything, can get you block steals, um, a solid all around player for the Suns. One of the big reasons why they're sitting on the top of the standings right now. So I like the McCall Bridges call. Um, let me throw, let me throw a, let me throw something at you in, right now. Right. Chris Paul or Anthony Edwards. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Apologies. Chris Paul or Kemba Walker? Same price tag, same position. Oh, that's a good. That's a good matchup. Uh, good, good, good question. Uh, you know what? Oh, <laughs> I can see them easily putting up the same. I, I'll say Chris Paul has a higher ceiling, and against the Knicks, he might want to show out. So I'll go with CP3. But that's a good call. All right, I'm going to go Kemba Walker. We can do a little friendly wager there. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, awesome. All right, that's it. Uh, that's it. That's all, folks. That's all she wrote. Um, that's the whole card. Um, <laughs> it was an absolute pleasure. Um, I think we can we can do one of each tier uh, to end the night. So as far as under five, under. 5K, who is there you your go. favorite player? You go with your numbers, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I manipulate them in my favor. Right? <laughs> uh, under 5K, if I had to pick one, I'm going to go with Kenyon Martin Jr., 4,700. I think he will be the star of the Rockets uh, tonight. Who do you have? I like it. I'm going to go Najee Marshall, 4,100. is going to be overlooked. I think he's going to get plenty of opportunity. I like him in a blowout against the Sixers. Okay. All right. So now we're talking mid tier, and we're gonna go up to eight k. Who do you like? Okay, I think my guy would have to be Mo Bamba at sixty one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's gonna bite me, but his last two games were incredible. Wendell Carter Jr. is out. Mo Bamba sixty one hundred. Hey, can't fault that. You gotta go with your gut, right? You just have to do it. <laughs> 
Um, I'm going to have to go with Mr. Ooh, this is a tough one. This is, <laughs> this, is, this is tough under AK. There's so many guys in play. Oh, man. Say you should have went a little higher. <laughs> right? I really should have. I really, Just my own benefit. I, I really screwed myself here. Um, all right. I'm going to go Kemba Walker, 7,600. I'm, I'm sticking with it. Yep. Okay. The, now the top tier guy, 8,100 8, or more. I'm going to let you go first on this one. Who do you All right. Have? All right, I'm gonna have to go. You know what? I'm gonna. It's gonna be a cop out, but I'm gonna go Nikola Jokic, ten thousand eight hundred. It's okay. a wrap. Okay, because I had two guys. I thought you was gonna name one of them, but I have Zion at ninety nine hundred, and I'll throw Dame in there at ninety seven hundred. Excellent. I love it. I love it. You went under ten k even. See? Yep. Yep. Cost <laughs> savings. I love it. I'm cheap. Right. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. All right, well, well, that's that's it for us. Um, I hope everyone has a great night. Uh, you can always find myself on Twitter at dmank33. And, Will, why don't you tell everyone your Twitter as well? Yes, yes, you can check me on Twitter at WilliamIsBill. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Peace. This has been a Hoop Ball presentation. Is QuickBooks slowing your business down? Do you have challenges managing inventory, project profitability, or just getting paid fast enough? Get your business to a better place and graduate to NetSuite today. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. Ditch the spreadsheets and all the old software you've outgrown. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need, all in one place, instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join the over 24,000 companies using NetSuite right now. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash info. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash info, netsuite.com slash info.